This is the Hemsaw All Function Dash 4 control that we use on the uh, several small pneumatic saw, Cyclone, Sidewinder, uh, H105. It's mounted on a pedestal where you can turn it around to whatever angle you want at. What we're going to do is just power it up. I'll show you how to power it up, uh, what the button functions do, and, uh, and go from there. To start this control, to power up the control, two things have to happen. The emergency stop has to be raised. It takes two hands to power up the control. You have to push the start button. That's when this light flashes, and then push the start button and start at the same time. That powers up the control. Once it's powered up, you can do manual things. We can raise the arm. We can close the vise, open the vise. We can move the bar forward. Retract. Uh, turn the motor on and all of those functions. We'll start with just doing, for instance, a manual cut. If you have a bar that you place in the vise and you want to cut it off, you can position the bar where you want it. You close the vise, the arm is already up. To turn the motor on also takes two hands to do that. We have to push the auto on, or the on button, and the start button. That turns on the blade. Once the blade's running, we can push the cut button. The arm will come down and make a single cut. Because it's in manual, we have to manually turn the motor off. We can raise the arm. We can open the vise, remove the material from the saw, and you can do it again. Uh, so the, you, what you have to remember is, before you cut anything, you have to close the vise. If the blade comes down on material that's not properly clamped, it's going to spin, and you'll destroy the blade. To do an automatic cut, which is really fairly simple, uh, all of these buttons have to be in auto. You, we can push the auto on button that will turn all of these lights to auto. So the shuttle, the, the feed clamp, the arm, the saw clamp, and the band motor are all in automatic. Again, we have the bar positioned in the vise, right where you want to cut it. We can start with a cut, which means it's going to make a trim cut first, and then it'll go into automatic. Or you can start with feed, which means it'll feed the material forward the first time and then make a cut. Typically for accuracy, we'll do a start with cut. This takes two hands again to start with cut. Push the start with cut button and the light. <laughs> that puts the machine in automatic. It's going to cut two parts. I have it set for two parts. That was the trim cut. cutting the first part. The arm is going to go back up again. It'll feed one more time. When it finishes this cut, the motor will turn off automatically. And then the saw will shut down and it'll show that it was programmed for two parts and two parts were cut. To reset the parts counter, we push the red button, sends the top number back to zero so we can do that evolution again. This control has the capability of feeding up to four strokes. So if you want to cut an 80 inch part, for instance, you can set the bar feed for about 20 inches. It'll feed four times to total 80 inches and then make one cut. And to make a four index cut, we just push the four button, it'll feed four times and make a cut. You can do it three times or two times, or typically if you're making parts less than 24 inches, you just have it set for a single index part.
the length on the bar feed reflects uh, inch and to, to three digits. So this is set for three inches exactly. Three inches and five thousandths would be right there, for instance, 3.005. To change this to five inches, we just turn this knob. To five inches, and this locks it in place so that it won't won't move. The cut watcher is a system that monitors the blade deviation. If the blade, I'll put my hands up here. If the blade is deviating in the cut, if it's bending because it's dull or because cutting forces are too high or too low, this number or this light will move to one side. I'll push the blade a little bit, and you can see how that number will change from one side to the other as the blade deviates or gets dull, it'll wander off. If it wanders off too far to the extreme, after about 30 seconds, it will stop the machine. That way, you can make the decision to change the blade or change the forces or blade speeds uh, to bring your parts back into tolerance. The out of stock light is, uh, or broken blade light, if the, if the machine runs out of bar material, if it's, if it's cutting along and the bar gets too short, it will trip a switch on the saw vise or on the feed vise, turn on the out of stock light to shut down the machine so it doesn't sit there and cycle needlessly. Or if the blade breaks, this light will come on. The coolant system on this saw has basically three functions. You can push the off button, it'll stay off. You can push the on button, the coolant pump will run so that if you have a wash down hose, you can, you can uh, wash the chips off of this, off the cutting area, the vices. Uh, when it's in automatic, the coolant only runs when the band motor runs, so it doesn't needlessly run the coolant. In the event of an emergency, you can shut down the, the whole control in the saw by pushing the, the uh, emergency stop switch. When you do that, it shuts off all electrical power to the saw the band motor will shut off and the arm will come down. Uh, so you want to make sure that, that there's nothing under the saw blade when you hit the emergency stop switch. The panic switch shuts the blade off and, ma and makes sure the arm is raised up so that if you're cutting and if the part is spinning or something like that, you can just push the panic button. That turns the blade off, but it retains power to the rest of the saw so the arm will stay up. It also turns on the broken blade indicator light here to reset the light. We push the reset button and that takes the panic condition out of the control. Clamping force is the amount of pressure in PSI that's applied to the cylinders that clamp the material. Uh, right now it's set for about 65 PSI. Uh, that may be too much pressure for really thin wall tubing. If it's too thin or if the, if the if the tube wants to crush because of the clamping force, we can turn the clamping force down clear to zero. Typically with any kind of heavy structural or solid material, you want to run it 85 or 90 PSI. You can run it to 100 PSI, but it's not necessary. And it's simple to, to adjust the pressure just by turning this knob. It'll also lock in place so that, you can, so that you can't turn it. Again, to change the pressure, pull the lock out and adjust it the clamping force to whatever you, whatever you want. This pressure controls the pressure on the saw vise and the feed vise. Cutting force is a pressure that's applied to the cylinder under the arm to, to make the arm either light or heavy. Uh, when it's set to about number five on the gauge, right about here, the clamping for the cutting force is going to be fairly light. This determines basically how heavy the arm is. Light setting the five, the arm, the weight of the arm is going to be really fairly light, uh, and it may cut fairly slow. To increase the force on the arm, the downforce on the arm, we just turn the pressure down to whatever pressure is required to pull a proper chip. Uh, and it's adjustable almost instantaneously just by changing the pressure on this gauge. Again, you can lock it. If you find a satisfactory cutting force, uh, you can just push the button in, and then it'll stay. It'll maintain that cutting force as long as you want it. The cutting force works in conjunction with the feed rate control that the feed rate control 
uh, regulates how much oil is coming out of the lift assembly. The feed rate knob right here uh, controls how fast the arm comes down. It doesn't have anything to do with how heavy it is, just how fast it comes down. When the arm is in cut, I can adjust it so the arm is coming down really fairly slow. Or I can turn the knob and open the valve and make the arm drop rapidly. Let me raise that up again. You can see how responsive it is when I turn it. It comes down pretty rapidly. We can make it just creep down as slow as you want to make it, or we can even stop it. If I turn it all the way clockwise, it'll stop. Typically, the feed rate is set so the arm comes down just about as fast as you think you're going to cut the bar.